we should have completed section 7.6, which is counting atoms, sorry, 7.5, and 7.6, which is calculating molar mass. We are now on to 7.7, .7, which is performing mole conversions. So we'll be using dimensional analysis in order to accomplish this section. So a reminder of the map where if you have X grams, then you would want to, that might be milligram, centigram, kilogram, etc. Any metric prefix with gram, or if I start you in the English units, it could be pounds or ounces. In all of these cases, the first thing you want to do is convert those to grams. We're going to use our metric to metric or English to metric conversions found on the back of your periodic table. Your English conversions if you forgot, are in this list over here, and your metric prefixes are in this list. So, if you need to refresh your memory on that, see the video. Okay, once we have managed to change from our X gram to gram, then we can change from grams to moles using the periodic table and getting the molar mass. So, anytime I ever want to convert between grams and moles, I always want to go to the periodic table. And I'm going to use on the periodic table the masses, the molar masses. I want to add them up. So what we like to say is if you need grams to change to mole, you go to the chart, which you may recall from our last chapter. Once we can change to mole, then we can change to molecules. And we're going to use what's known as Avogadro's number of molecules which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is Avogadro's number molecules instead. So let's do a couple of examples. The first one, how many moles of nitrogen? So what I'm looking for is moles of, and what is nitrogen? We need the formula for this. Nitrogen is a diatomic, so it's not just N, it's N2 and I'm given 97.2 grams of nitrogen. So my given is 97.2 grams of N2, and I want to change that to moles of N2. So I'm going to take my given, which is this, and I'm going to put it over 1. 97.2 grams of nitrogen all over 1 times, draw a line. I'm going to take my unit, grams of nitrogen, which is right here, and I'm going to bring that down. So I'm going to say, right, grams of nitrogen at the bottom. This way, my grams of nitrogen will cancel out. Grams of nitrogen, here's grams. I got two choices. I'm going to X grams or I'm going to moles. Because we want to end up with moles, I'm going to go to mole. So I'm going to go to the chart, get the molar mass of nitrogen, and that equals one mole. I'll go ahead and write one mole at the top, and I know that on the periodic table, nitrogen equals 14.01 times two of them is going to equal 28.02 grams. And so this is my molar mass, 28.02 grams. Now that I have, now that I'm at moles, I'm finished with my problem since that's what they wanted me to figure out. So I can calculate my final answer. Notice that the grams cancel and I'm left with moles of nitrogen. And so that's going to be the unit on my final answer. So let's calculate our answer. We're going to have 97.2. And because my 28.02 grams is in the denominator at the bottom right here, I'm going to hit divided by 28.02. And that's going to give me this long number. And I want to do sig figs. Because my starting number is only three sigs, I want to round this off to only be three sig figs as well. So that answer in the proper sig figs would be 3.47. So my final answer should be 3.47. And my unit is moles of nitrogen. Let's do another example. How many molecules of carbon dioxide? And I'm going to need the formula for carbon dioxide. So I'm looking for molecules of CO2. 
and I'm given 0.02 moles of CO2. So I'm starting out with 0.02 moles of CO2. Again, I'm going to take my given 0.02 moles CO2, put it over 1, times draw a line. I'm going to bring down moles of CO2. It's always 1 mole. I have options here now. I can change from mole to gram by going to the chart and getting the molar mass, or I could change from mole to molecules using Avogadro's number. Since I want to end up on molecules, I'm going to use this direction on the map. So I'm going to put 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2 on top. And that will complete my setup. I'm going to cancel moles of CO2, moles of CO2, and this is what the unit of my final answer should be. So now, let's calculate it. We're going to take 0 0.02 and we're going to multiply it times 6.022. We're going to do E to the 23. And that equals this number. And because I only have one sig fig to begin with right here, I only want one sig fig in my answer. So I'm going to actually round this off to be 1 times 10 to the 22. So 1 times 10 to the 22 molecules of CO2 is my final answer. Okay, let's try one more. How many milligrams of zinc hydroxide, so I'm looking for milligrams of, I need the formula for this, so when I have to calculate my molar mass, I know what to go to the chart and look for. Zinc is Zn plus 2, hydroxide is OH minus 1, I'm going to switch the charges and have one zinc and two hydroxides. And yes, it has to go in parentheses because it is a polyatomic and I need more than one. I'm given 4.90 times 10 to the 21 molecules of zinc hydroxide. So this problem is actually going to be pretty long because it starts all the way on the right with molecules and I need to end up on milligrams, which is all the way on the left, an X gram. So this is going to be every single step possibly that could be asked of you. So put my given over 1, 4.90 times 10 to the 21 molecules zinc hydroxide times draw a line. I'm going to bring down molecules of zinc hydroxide. And if I need molecules, that I want to use Avogadro's number. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. I want to go from molecules to moles. So that's what goes on top. One mole of zinc hydroxide. Times draw a line. Bring down mole. It's always one mole. I'll put my one here. And now I'm moving from mole over to grams. And to get grams, I want to go to the periodic table and add up the molar mass. So when I go to the periodic table, I'm going to go find zinc. Here is zinc. And I'm going to add oxygen times 2. I'm going to add hydrogen times 2. And when I get all those added together, I'm going to get a molar mass of 99.41 for zinc hydroxide. So we're going to put at the top 99.41, and that's grams of zinc hydroxide. Times draw a line, one more step, bring down grams of zinc hydroxide, and I want to go to milligrams, because that's my X grams. You should know that one gram equals a thousand milligrams, and now we can get our final answer. I'm going to do 4.90 e to the 21 divided by 6.022 e to the 23. Let me scoot this over. Times 99.41 times 1,000. And this is what we'll get because our original number has three sig figs. Our final answer will only be three sigs, so it'll be 809 is our final answer. 809 milligrams zinc hydroxide.